Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. You are about to watch a selected JSON lesson from our free course called JSON Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers. Knowing how to create, parse, and manipulate JSON is essential in order to integrate FileMaker with the world of APIs, Claris Connect, artificial intelligence, and more. In this complete course, we'll cover everything you need to know about JSON from the perspective of a Claris FileMaker Pro developer. We're making this course available for free because we feel it's an important and essential building block for you to understand in order to advance your skills to the next level. And once you learn how to manipulate JSON formatted text, you are that much closer to accomplishing your first API integration in your own FileMaker apps. And like all our other courses at Productive Computing University, this course comes complete with downloadable FileMaker files for you to use and follow along with. These downloadable files are available directly in selected lessons inside the course. There's a link in the description to enroll in this free course called JSON Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. Okay, now let's dive into the lesson. In this lesson, we'll talk about JSON format and the rules of the road. So if you go to JSONLint.com, you'll be presented with an online JSON validator. Before we create JSON, let's go and look at the rules of the road. Under the same website here down below, it says proper JSON format. Using JSON doesn't require any JavaScript knowledge, though having such would only improve your understanding of JSON. And though the knowledge of JavaScript isn't necessary, following specific rules is. First of all, the data is in name value pairs, sometimes known as key value pairs, where you have the key or the name followed by the value or the actual data itself. Think of the name as being a field name, like first and last and company and the value would be Mark and La Rochelle and Productive Computing. The data between that is separated by commas. So very much like comma-separated text, JSON also uses commas to separate data. Objects are encapsulated within the opening and closing curly brackets. That's these here. An empty object can be represented by a left and right curly bracket. Arrays are encapsulated within opening and closing square brackets, like this. An empty array can be represented by left and right square brackets. A member is represented by a key value pair contained in double quotes, and each member should have a unique key within an object structure. The value of a member must be contained in double quotes if it's a string. All right, let's stop there and we'll go through the rest of this as we start building this, because I don't want to get too far ahead with too much terminology and not enough practical visual aspects of this. So it already mentioned that I can use a left and right curly brace and validate that as valid JSON. You could call this an empty object, but technically speaking, this is a JSON object at this point. I can also do the same thing with the straight braces. That's also valid JSON, although you would almost never see this without some form of a key preceding it. We'll get to more on that later. All right. Let's say I wanted to represent the first name field and the name Mark as a JSON object. I'll start my object with the left curly brace. I can put a space or not put a space. This is totally optional. In fact, I can put many spaces. This validator will remove extra spaces, however. And I can put the double quote because we are working with a string here. And I'm going to put the word first representing the name of the field called first. That's the key. Now I'll use a colon to separate the key from its value. And because the value is also a string, in this case mark, it also has to be in quotes. So I'll put M-A-R-C. And that's my first key value pair. And I'm going to close this here. Notice how I have random spaces all over the place. When I validate this, it will separate these by putting a carriage return. And it will put one space after the colon and no spaces before. If I continue to insist on spaces here, it will fix that and validate it so that it's formatted correctly. Now, when FileMaker functions create JSON, they tend to create the JSON without this leading space here in the value area. That's what it will look like if FileMaker creates the JSON. This particular validation tool happens to put a space there, probably for readability. Your JSON will work either with or without this space. Okay. So that's pretty straightforward and quite simple. Now, what if I wanted to add a second field to the data, such as last name? 
It already said that I need to put commas between my data, so I'll put a comma here. Again, I can put as many spaces as I want. I can put as many returns as I want. And then I'll put the last, like this, in quotes. Then I have to separate it with a colon. And then I'll put another quote, and I'll put my last name, La Rochelle. Notice how I don't have a comma after La Rochelle because we're done with this series. I validate that, and it'll work just fine. Now, what most people will do is have this look more like that, so you have the least amount of spaces and returns. And technically speaking, if this is computer-generated, you wouldn't have all of the formatting that you see here at all. It would be one continuous string like this. This JSON formatter happens to clean it up so it's more readable. All right, continuing on that idea, if I wanted to add a company, I could do company, quote, colon, productive computing, and so on. Validate that, and it's still valid JSON. Okay, now let's talk about adding an array, also known as a list. You can think of this as a value list in FileMaker. So to add an array, you're going to do almost the same thing, except you're going to use a slightly different method. You're going to use a comma to separate the data. Then you'll still give it a label. So think of this value list as hats, as in the number of hats I wear when running productive computing. So that's still the key, and we have to put it in quotes because it's a string. We still need to separate the key from its value using the colon. But in this case, it won't be a single value, like president. That's one hat that I wear. I actually wear a lot of hats. So we can put the left straight bracket in here, indicating that we're going to have multiple values. Now, you still only need one value. If you wanted to put president in here and close that value, that would still validate as JSON. It doesn't have to have multiple values but it's expecting multiple values, or an, an array is what provides that. So you could say, okay, president, CEO, developer, trainer, and those are the different hats one might wear. And that's an array formatted just like that. Now I can continue this and just go right back into key values, put a comma, I'm putting a return here for readability, but it's not required. And let's continue. Let's just say, what is the city for productive computing? And San Marcos. What's the state for productive computing? I'll put CA for short. And validate all that. So you can mix and match here, which is already so far beyond what you can do with a comma-separated text. Yes, you can put multiple values in comma-separated text, but the problem is you start seeing gaps in the data like we saw in that other lesson. Okay, so let's just say I want an array only. I don't want to do key value pairs. I just want to put a list together. So I still need to give it a key. So let's just say I want to do even numbers. And we'll put that in quotes, colon. And then we'll put our left straight bracket and one, two, actually two, four, six, eight, ten. That's my even numbers. And if I close that out using the curly bracket, it'll be acceptable JSON. You could put a comma here and then have another array. This is a one, three, five, seven, nine. Close that out. We still have our closing mark down here, so we're good to go. So now I've got a combination of two arrays, one with two, four, six, eight, ten, representing even numbers, and one with a key of odd numbers, and the values of that as one, three, five, seven, and nine. Notice I'm not putting any quotes here because they're numbers. From there, I can add key value pairs if I wanted to. Back to the first name idea and validate that, no problem. And then I can mix and match. I'll just call this random. Put my array marker here. One, two, three, comma, mark. 
true. I could also use true, which is Boolean. Notice how it's not in quotes because it's a reserved word. Make sure you keep it lowercase. False, same idea. Null, same idea. Reserved word. One, four point five six seven. Takes decimals, no problem. Don't need preceding zeros either. And a final value. Close it off and validate. Didn't like something here because I forgot the comma. Now validate again. There we are. All right, let's look at some of the other rules of the road and explore them here in our validator. So we left off here. Boolean values are represented using their true or false literals in lowercase. You saw an example of that. Number values are represented using double bit precision floating format and shouldn't have leading zeros. Offensive characters in a string need to be escaped using the backslash character. Let's take a look at that real quickly. I'll put in a value here. First, uh, I'll just call it nickname. I'll call it full name with full with nickname. That's what I'll call it. And we'll just say Mark. And then I'm going to add a quote. So I'll backslash and put a quote for my nickname. Another backslash and a quote, Mark Lou. La Rochelle. That ends the whole string. Then we end the JSON object, and that validates properly. So if you are going to look at using a character that's reserved for a symbol, you have to put a backslash to escape it. All right, let's continue on. Null values are represented by the null literal, where we put the word null. You already saw me do that. Dates and similar object types aren't adequately supported and should be converted to strings. That's just something to be aware of. JSON is not data aware. It has to either be in the string, in a, in a series of a string or a number if you're using serial numbers for your dates. Each member of an object or array must be followed by a comma, except for the last one. I think you saw plenty of examples of that just now. The standard extension for the JSON file is .json. The MIME type for JSON files is application slash JSON. All right, so that takes care of the basics, the rules of the road, how it all works, and we'll go on looking at some actual examples where we construct JSON based on real world data. Thanks for joining us on this lesson. To enroll in the free complete course, click on the link in the description or visit ProductiveComputingUniversity.com where you'll find both free and paid courses on today's most important topics related to the Claris FileMaker platform.